What is up, Mindset Hackers? Thank you so much for joining me here today. I have another amazing guest. His name is Derek Rydell. He is an author, a best-selling author of a book called Emergence. And today we're gonna talk about what's called The Law of Emergence. He also wrote another book called The Abundance Project, which is the book that I have recommended to more people than any other book. It is absolutely amazing. And he's also a coach for executives at companies such as uh, Disney and American Express, as well as a screenwriter and a former actor. He's got a lot of accomplishments under his belt. He's also had some really, really tough times in his life, which led him to discover the law of emergence. And I remember this so clearly. I was In 2018, I was riding my bike uh, on a long, long bike ride, probably a few hours long. And I remember I was listening to him him on a podcast called The Eventual Millionaire. And his episode was so absolutely gripping to me. And after that, I went out and bought his book, The Abundance Project, and started implementing a lot of those principles. And a lot of those things you hear me talking about here on this podcast. So a couple weeks ago, I thought it might be cool to reach out to his team and see if he might be available for an interview. And I'm so glad to say that he's accepted. So we're going to dive in right now. You are absolutely going to love this. This means so much to have you here today. How are you doing, Derek? I'm doing awesome, man. Even better after that introduction. <laughs> oh well, yeah. Thank you. This I'm like I've got like goosebumps right now just being here with you. I would love it if you tell me a little bit about your backstory and how you ended up becoming the superhero of emergence and abundance that you are. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Um, that's really beautiful. It's always really fun to hear and understand where people, where the touch points are. And just to know that if you're putting your work out there, you're sharing your message, you're living your life, the butterfly effect is happening, you know, somewhere, somehow, and you may never know, people's lives are touched and then people change and then they launch their work and then they change people's lives. And it's just really important to remember that because we're always, as entrepreneurs or artists or creators, we're often toiling away in our little workshop and or on Zoom or on, and we're putting our podcasts out into the ethers. And it's important to remember that we are touching people for all of you that are watching. And it just takes one and suddenly like the butterfly wings, it can change the weather on the other side of the world. But for me, I like so many probably listening, went on a journey of self-improvement for many, many years. And this was years ago. And after years of self-improvement, the only thing I had improved was my ability to describe why I was so screwed up. I could tell you, you know, when I was 10 and my dad saw my report card and saw all A's and a B and said, what's with the B, son? I could tell you what that did to me. And I could just describe all the reasons and ways that my life had turned, but I didn't improve myself. I was more frustrated. I was more angry. And, and I was like trying to dig myself out of a hole. The more I dug, the deeper in it I got. And I ended up becoming addicted to drugs and alcohol. I almost died of an overdose. I don't know if I talked about that on the show you heard, but I remember lying in the hospital room and the IV snaking out of my arm and the doctor whispering to me, you're lucky to be alive. And I was like, am I? <laughs> am I lucky to be alive? Is this what all of my self-improvement has gotten me? And I just thought, well, I just need to work harder, work smarter, you know, try to attract more or better. And I got a little momentum going. And I was an actor at the time and I, I got a part and I was doing this movie in Jamaica and everything went south again. Everything went sideways again. And I was just giving up. I was like, I can't believe it. Finally, things are going. Now everything's falling apart again. And I just prayed to get lost from it all. And I went diving in a coral reef and praying to get lost from everything. And that's what was my first mistake. And my second mistake was diving in a coral reef alone. And I got, I did get lost and I got stuck in this coral reef and it looked like an underwater booby trap tomb out of an Indiana Jones movie, S giant spiked coral all beneath me, fire coral all around me. I couldn't touch the sides. I couldn't swim down. I couldn't lift my head up to see where I was. Nobody knew I was there. It was getting dark and I was going to drown. And I won't tell the whole detail of the story. But there came a moment where I knew I was going to drown. And I'd already tried to negotiate with God, you know, I'll go to church on Sunday, please get me out of this. And God was not playing, let's make a deal. And finally, all that was left was just to surrender, real surrender, real letting go, not negotiating, like taking my hand off the wheel. And in that moment, there was a flash 
And I saw that this guy that I've been trying to improve all my life was a fiction. He was an amalgamation of parental fantasies, peer pressure, societal conditions, all of the shoulds and shouldn'ts and have tos and supposed tos. And there was nothing I could ever do that would make him enough. But simultaneously, there was a version of me or a self, I can't really describe it in words, but he had never been damaged by life. And so he did not need to be fixed. And he was already whole. And so he could not be improved. And I want you guys just to take a moment because who would you be and what could be possible if you realized who you really were had never been damaged so he didn't need to be fixed or she and or healed or that who you really are is whole and complete so you cannot improve upon it. So that was the realization and it was a flash of light. And in the next moment, I was outside of the the this maze of coral where I've been stuck, standing on top of this piece of coral. I'm not sure how I got there, but I could see the whole maze and I realized that was a metaphor. I had been swimming through a maze, following all these brightly colored things. I was gasping for air and drowning. Only now I literally was experiencing it in 3D. But that was where I was internally as I was trying to fix, change, heal, improve, make my life better. And, but now from this new framework, I was able to slip out. By the way, the exit was right behind me, inches away the whole time, I couldn't see it. But I got out and I tried to become a monk briefly. That did not go well. <laughs> Long story short, I was fasting and silent for like a week. I'd never done it. I was freaking out. I broke into the monk's kitchen in the middle of the night to steal food out of the refrigerator. And then I got violently sick and had an out-of-body experience and ran screaming out of the monastery pretty much the next day. So I, didn't, I was like, okay, maybe that's not my life. But I cloistered myself in my apartment and I went on this inner journey. And I realized ultimately, I was like, what happened to me? What was this vision? And I saw eventually in nature, which is ultimately the subject of my book, Emergence, that in every seed, in all of nature, there is a perfect pattern. And when the conditions are congruent with that pattern, that purpose and that potential emerges. That is how all of nature operates, whether it's the seed of an oak tree in the acorn, a seed of an apple tree in the apple seed, the seed of you, the seed of a business, the seed of a great idea, all of life emerges from a seed. And you could even say the seed of the universe. The Big Bang was a moment where the conditions were optimal for an involuted pattern of life and bam, it emerged. And then all these other seeds were scattered and they're unfolding and emerging as the conditions are met. The difference between nature I saw was that nature is indigenous, meaning it's basically at the whim of the tides and the trends and the weather of external conditions, whether, you know, that acorn might become an oak tree, but it might also become squirrel food, right? Because it's not in control of its own conditions. But you and I are not indigenous, we're endogenous, which means we carry our conditions with us. We are walking greenhouses. We are self-effulgent, which means even if it's dark outside, we can shine the light on that seed of our purpose and potential and create the ripe and the ready conditions for its emergence. Whether we are born on the wrong side of the tracks, whether outside we're not getting all the nutrients we need, we have the capacity through mindset hacks, through emotional activation, through spiritual realization, through acting from the truth of our potential to create the conditions, to come into integrity with what we're really made of and what we're really made for. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter what you're facing. It doesn't matter if you're lost on a desert island. When you come into alignment with that seed of power and purpose planted in the soil of your soul, it must begin to emerge. So that was what I saw. And I was broke, I was broken, I was suicidal. I was, you know, living on mac and cheese, 19 cents a box, got really good at mac and cheese, but you know, I, I was living on mac and cheese. And once I had that realization and the downloads kept coming and I began to apply it, my whole life turned around. 
And I went from that little one room apartment within a matter of a year to making six figures, to getting a bigger place, to you know living my dreams, to falling in love, to all these things I had been striving to make happen. I realized that was the effort creating the greatest resistance to them. But when I came into integrity, I didn't make it happen. I made it welcome. And, and I'll say one last little metaphor about that. And I know there's one story you want me to tell about, but, but think of it like this, right where we are right now, your favorite song is playing. Somewhere in this airwave right here, it's playing on a station, but it's as if it doesn't exist, right? But if you take a radio and you tune the dial, and especially if you know what that station is, you tune into that station. When your frequency is that frequency, that station becomes manifest. That song becomes manifest. Or when the station is manifest, you have a manifestation, right? And, and so where was the song before you tuned in? It was right here. You didn't make it happen, you made it welcome. You came into alignment with it. And that's true about everything. The oak tree is already there in the quantum field of the acorn. We know that in quantum physics, that there's the potential, there's the platonic form, and when the conditions are right through the observer effect and all those things, bam, superpositionality collapses into an atom of possibility. And that's the same thing that happens for us. And again, as that happened, my life was able to just unfold and emerge and unfold and emerge not without challenges and we'll talk about how the challenges are part of your evolutionary progression but it just turned it just i realized the whole model of how we're supposed to grow and or heal and or succeed was exactly opposite of the way nature actually designed it to operate and that was what ultimately launched me into the world and, you know, launched me into my work. So that's kind of where we got started. Thank you for sharing that. It's, it's almost like what you're describing, that the exit to that coral reef was behind you. And it's kind of like the same thing about the frequency. It's already there, but we're not seeing it. So we think it doesn't exist, but the frequency is already there. Exactly. The seed is already inside of us. And I, I remember reading a book, one of your books, or maybe I was listening to you talk about it, but like the sun doesn't go out and grab the rays the rays come from the sun just like the, oh yes the leaves grow out from the tree instead of the tree yes. going out to get leaves and yes. so um i i noticed that you had been talking a, a lot about something that i've never heard from anyone else and i think that has a lot to do with what you just described but let's make this let's bring this law up and talk a little bit more about it so that we can get more exposure about it. it's the law of emergence so describe to me what exactly is the law of emergence we hear about the law of attraction we hear about abundance but what is this that you've created? Yeah, and by the way, this came out, I began to teach this when law of attraction, the secret was suddenly exploding everywhere. And I called it the unattractive side of the law of attraction. Uh, because a lot of the law of attraction, when you're trying to attract, the fundamental belief is you don't have. And so now you're trying to go uphill with your foot on the gas and on the brake. You are an empty acorn trying to attract an oak tree to you, right? The acorn doesn't attract an oak. The acorn doesn't even improve itself into an oak. So all, I also started to teach that self-improvement was an oxymoron because you can't improve the self. And all your attempts to improve it create most of the resistance and the struggle and, and the block to actually being it because there is no such self that you're trying to improve. Again, imagine the acorn trying to improve itself into an oak tree. It would become squirrel food. Right. So it doesn't it's not a the acorn is not a broken and inadequate oak tree. Right. It's a perfect acorn. And and it doesn't achieve oak hood. The acorn mine could never imagine what an oak is. It, it would never know where to start. It only can surrender to that perfect pattern within the soil and within its own being and allow the right conditions to be created. And then it happens through it. Life happens through us, not to us. So, so the law of emergence says that inside every seed is already a perfect pattern for its full purpose and potential. And when the conditions are right for that pattern or congruent, that potential emerges. 
And this is true again. This is how all of existence operates. And I will even make a claim that what we call evolution is not starting from nothing and through blind random selection becoming something. Evolution starts from the whole pattern of existence and through the process of creating the next best condition allows for it to keep emerging and unfolding and unfolding, right? And that's true with us. And, and one of the other, and, and it is all about mindset because to he who is wrong in mind, he can do all the right things. It's still going to turn out wrong. But to he or she who is right in mind, they can even do wrong things and it will still turn out right. Because it's not, it's not about so much what you're doing, but who you're being and where you're coming from. And that's the piece you were saying. When we think that we are separate, that we're an empty shell trying to fill ourselves up, that we are separate from life, separate from love, separate from wealth, separate from health, whatever it is you think you don't have, when we think we're separate, we create all of these coping mechanisms and belief systems to compensate and overcome. And as I said, that creates most of the resistance to its natural unfoldment. It's all the static on the line of the radio. But it also means we may, through sheer will, be able to manifest a bigger paycheck, but we will end up often just being broke at a higher income bracket. We may, through sheer will, attract that new job, but we will just end up with the same jerky boss in a different uniform, right? And we're like, how did he get here so fast? <laughs> what happened, right? And so, or whatever the case is, a new relationship, we'll just have the same problems. And this is why the average person doesn't live 70 to 90 time, years. They live the same year, 70 to 90 times. They're just rearranging deck chairs. It's the same story with a, not a lot of real transformation. But when you know that you've already got it all, then you know you're not on your way to more wealth and success and health and love and joy. You are coming from it. You are coming from it. The oak comes from the acorn. You know, the sunbeam comes from the sun. The branch comes from the tree. The wave comes from the ocean. Everything is coming from. And it's on its way to a greater expression and emergence and unfoldment of its potential. And when you begin to understand that, by the way, I didn't make this teaching up. I didn't make up this principle. I coined a new framework and a new way to talk about it. But it's exactly what all the great masters and mystics and teachers throughout the ages have taught, whether it's Jesus or Buddha or Lao Tzu and the Tao or any great master, even in any industry, if you study them closely, whether it's an artist, whether it's a tech mogul, if you study the best, the Steve Jobs of the worlds, the Oprah Winfrey's of the worlds, the Steven Spielberg's of the worlds. If you study them closely, the Shakespeare's, the Gandhi's, the Dr. King's, the whatever, what you'll see, it's not always perfect. We're all flawed, but you'll see that whether it was on accident or by grace or just karma or through dedicated focus, they started from a sense of, I've got something. I am something, I see it, I feel it, I know it. And then rather than waiting for people to validate or approve or waiting for the external conditions to be right or ready, they just started unfolding. They just started finding a way to circulate. The law of circulation is a key piece of emergence and in the Abundance Project, they just found a way as the poet Robert Browning says, not that life and truth comes within us, but to find a way from whence we can release the imprisoned splendor. They just found a way to release that imprisoned splendor. The acorn has an urgency of emergence. And if it, if it could stop, stop that, it would have an emergency, right? But instead it's like, oh, it follows its yes. It follows its inspiration. And, and that's what we've lost in a lot of ways, in all of our efforts to try to make stuff happen or the belief that somebody's got our answer or if only they would change or the economy or whoever, instead of getting really good 
at tapping into that emerging impulse, that burning desire, that yes, and learning how to keep saying yes, 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 yes. Because when you say yes to the yes, you begin to create the channel, the condition, or that potential to start to emerge. So anyways, I could keep, you know, pull my string, ask me a question. I'll just keep going, man. I'll just preach. I love it. I'm just like, just soaking this all in. And it's fun for me too, because it spurs new questions that I have for you. And I remember yeah. you talking about, there's a couple of things I would love to touch on. Um, I'm so glad you brought up the law of circulation, because this is something that does not get talked about. And yeah. my financial abundance started to really unlock when I stopped like trying to, you know, I used to be really horrible with money and I, you know, spend too much. And, um, you know, then I thought it was about like saving and living within your means. And one thing I heard from you was like, you know, that, that's stagnation too. Like if you're holding yeah. it back, then it can, it can become like a swamp. And so the craziest yeah. thing is I realized that by giving more and by letting money pass through me, it really unlocked a lot more financial abundance. But then I realized it's also with time and with energy and with yes. opportunity. Yes. So with your you, time, talent and your treasure. Yes, yes, this is huge and it needs to be talked about more. So tell me about, tell me about the law of circulation or describe Absolutely, it. Absolutely, man. I love, you know, this is one of my favorite topics. The law of circulation, I mean, and what you'll see is this all emerges out of the framework of emergence because the fundamental truth is if, is if you have everything already within you, which you do just as the acorn is in the seed, I mean, the oak tree is in the acorn, and the oak tree is in the field of the quantum field of the acorn. So everything you could ever want or need to be all that you were made to be, you already have. So therefore, by definition, whatever's missing is what you're not giving, what you're not expressing, what you're not letting out. As the Gospel of Thomas said, one of the lost books in the um, of the era of Jesus and all that, a real book, um, it said, if you Bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. But if you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. And Brene Brown, which we, a lot of us know that name, she says, unexpressed creativity is not benign. It metastasizes. And if you, so, so basically what all these are saying is there's something in you and you got to bring it out. And whatever's missing in your life isn't become someone or something out there isn't coming to you. But in some way, you're not letting life come through you and from you, right? And so, like, what is the greatest demonstration of the abundance of a fruit tree? It's not that somebody comes along and hangs a bunch of fruit on its branches, right? That would be terrible. The fruit would just rot. It's what emerges from it is the demonstration of its abundance. See, I got nothing now. Watch. How do you like me now? All of a sudden, I got all this flowers and fruit. Where did all that come from? Presto, change up, magic. But it's not magic. It's the way nature is designed. And we're the same way. So the law of circulation, first of all, the law of circulation says you cannot give what you don't have. So you have to have first. And I don't mean you have to have from the world. I mean, you have to develop a mindset of I have, I can, I will, I am able. I have to develop a mindset and a heart set of having. And if I'm waiting for somebody to love me or like me, I have to ask myself, if I loved and liked me, how would I live? How would I treat myself? And as I do that, guess what? I'll feel love and like for myself. Now I have something. But the law of circulation says you cannot keep what you don't give. So now I have. I can't give what I don't have, but I can't keep what I don't give. Now I got to give my love, give my respect, give whatever it is, whatever it is I want more of, I got to give it away. But then finally, the law of, emergent, law of circulation says you cannot sustain what you don't receive. So now you have to open up and be willing and available to all the love and all the gifts and all the grace and all the opportunity and all the clues that are flowing to you. That's a complete breath. Breathe in. Breathe out, receive it back. And what most of us are doing in our life and in different areas is we're either just breathing out all day, giving, 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 giving from not having, and we're gasping and we're empty and we're resentful and we're dying, or we're breathing in all day, taking, 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 hoarding, hoarding, hold on, save, save. 
And again, if you do that, you die. You, of course, you can't do that with breath, but you can cheat it in a lot of other systems. And, and, or if I breathe out and then I, or if I breathe in and I breathe out, but then I don't relax and open and allow it to come back in. All three of those stages are necessary. You must have, you must give, and you must receive. And all three of those are in our power. And we won't go into all of it in the Awaken Wealth Work and in the Abundance Project book. I talk about the seven abundance activators or the seven wealth activators or the seven gifts. And the first one is giving forth of your time, talent, and treasure. Because what happens is, based on this hypnotic spell, the matrix we've all been conditioned under, believing, well, I'll do it when I have more time, or I'll do it when I have more money or I'll do treasure, or I'll do it when I have more validation that I'm good enough, talent. So we wait for the time, we wait to have the talent, or we wait to have enough treasure to be generous, to be creative, to be productive, to, be, to live. And what happens is we're holding our breath and we're stagnating. And that we're failing to circulate what's already in us, even if it's just a little bit, even if it's, even if you just give a dime in charity, or even if you just spend 10 minutes a day meditating or writing, or all I've, I, all I've got is 10 minutes, great. Invest 10 minutes, circulate 10 minutes of your time in that area that matters most and watch as both your time expands and your talent expands, et cetera, et cetera. And, it, and make sure you are giving to yourself. Well, I don't have time to take care of myself. Well, where's it going to come from magically? It's never going to come. You have to take the time to invest in yourself, your self-care, your self-education, whatever that is. And it's, it's challenging for some of us. And some of us have one or more of these areas. Like we're really working hard on ourselves. But we still have areas, I guarantee it, where we've got a story that says, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough treasure or money or resources, I don't have enough talent or ability or confidence yet, when they change or when they give me this or when they say that or when, when I feel this way then, and those are all stories of breaking the circuit of circulation. Because this is a final thing I'll say and then you can, you can punch in is, the law of circulation is based on the idea that all of life operates in circuits, as I just shared the breath circuit. And, and you're made up of all these circuits, right? And the circuits are made up of the polarities. So it's breathing in, breathing out, it's giving, it's taking, it's selfless, and it's selfish. And whenever you only are doing one aspect of it, you have a broken circuit. And you mentioned the swamp. It's like, imagine there's an opening in the earth and there's an inlet, but there's no outlet. So it's receiving or taking or receiving, 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 but there's no outlet. That's eventually gonna flood the area and it's gonna kill all kinds of stuff and wreak havoc, right? So that's an inlet with no outlet. Now imagine that same basin, it's full of water, there's an outlet, but no inlet. So that's just giving, 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 or doing, 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 but not allowing more to come in. Eventually, it'll become a dry riverbed, a dry creek, and nothing will grow. And imagine now there's no inlet or outlet. That, that water dies. It becomes a swamp. It's stagnation, which is another name for hell. And, 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 and nothing, not even the animals, will drink from it. But the good news is no matter how bad it is, whether it's empty, flooded, or swamp-like, the minute you repair that circuit, the minute you start, wherever you think you don't have, you start building the mindset of having, having, having. And then wherever you are not giving and circulating, you now start generating, circulating, giving, sharing, shining. Now you have an inlet and an outlet, and that swamp will transform into a new oasis in that area of your life. Whatever that might be, whether it's relationships, whether it's physical health, whether it's wealth, whether it's a business, the only problem is that there's a break in the circuit and there's not enough life coming in or enough life coming out. 
and it's not circulating. Wherever there's more circuit circulating, you have more life, more growth, more green, whether it's the grass on your in your backyard or your arteries in your heart or whatever the case may be. Where there's more circulation, it always produces more abundance. That is so beautiful. And one thing that that, helped, that analogy helped me realize is that there's people with a lot of money, but they're not very wealthy because it stagnates because they're afraid to, they clutch onto it. And I think that the swamp metaphor really, you know, helped me see that like it, it abundance to me doesn't have anything to do with an amount. It's more of a feeling, but I want to dive into some abundance stuff here and, and, um, I've got a few of your metaphors too that I want to <laughs> get some light on. But uh, before that, like if you could give me two two sentences, maybe three, how would you describe abundance? How would you define abundance? Well, I would say, first of all, abundance is the substance of all of creation. It's It's the embodiment or the activation or the awareness of the substance of all of creation. And it is your consciousness. Your consciousness is the source and the substance from which everything can manifest. Just like the Big Bang came out of nothing, but the no thing was really the infinite, inexhaustible substance of all things. And you are designed to create the same way. Out of no thingness, nothingness, you can manifest. You can say, let there be light. You can manifest according to your seed pattern. And abundance is having the ability to do just that. It's not, I have a lot. It's, I have the ability to manifest all that my perfect seed pattern needs out of the nothingness of my being. That's abundance. Oh, I love that. Going back to the circulation, I remember you talking about a metaphor of like a garden hose and abundance flowing through the garden hose, but then sometimes we get kinks in these and it kind of goes in line with what you're talking about. We are this perfect pattern. We have the perfect pattern inside of us and we are the ones that kink this hose up. We're the ones who put up the kinks. And in your book, uh, Abundance Project, you talk about like these blind spots or these kinks that people put that, that block themselves for abundance. And um, I would love to, can you describe some of the ways that people create these kinks in their abundance? And I, you know, you touched on one like separation and, you know, yesterday I was talking with one, one of my mentees and he was sharing a win with me and he's like, oh, it was you know, it's not like one of your wins, but it's something for me. And I was like, whoa, that's creating that gap right there. Like you're comparing yourself with me. And I imagine comparison's one of these things too, but we create these gaps that don't need to be there because we're judging things. But can you share with me three block, three of the most common blocks that people have that kink up their abundance? Well, the first one is that we believe abundance or wealth is money and dollars and crypto and stocks and bonds and whatever. We believe it's things. And that's like the farmer believing the fruit on the tree is the wealth of the tree. And then when, when, when all the trees are empty of barren of fruit, then she's like, well, guess we should just tear it all down, burn it all down, we're broke now. That's the ignorance. When in fact, those trees are just as wealthy and abundant as ever before. And when the conditions are right with the roots in a harvest, there will be a whole new harvest of fruits. Again and again and again, if you treat the roots, you'll have a harvest of fruits. So it's understanding that abundance and wealth is not matter and material. It's actually this invisible mechanism and substance of awareness of consciousness out of which we can literally create anything. And by the way, they did a study where they took a tree, they put it in a tub, measured the, the, the volume of it all, grew the fruit, removed the fruit, and, and measured it again, and it did not change the volume of the, of the soil, which was to say that where was it making all this fruit out of? It was making it out of the place everything makes it, which is nothing, no thing. And, and so when you have this idea that wealth is matter, then you're gonna, same way you're gonna think, well, I've only got this much time, so I'm limited by the, the measurement of time, or I'm limited, but whereas when you get free of the measurement mentality, the scientific mentality that says, 
Only what you can see, touch, taste, and measure is real. No, what you can see, touch, taste, and measure is what's not real. It's an artifact of what's real. It's a relative perception and projection of what's real. But what's real is infinite and inexhaustible. And when you live from that, you can do in an hour what takes most people a day or never. You can manifest the answer out of, out of nothing. And so that's, that's one of the first big hypnotic spells, wealth spells, we have to break. And I could go into a whole thing about it and why it's a problem. And in fact, the story you love, you know, where I was sitting in my apartment broke once again, because I had been thinking my savings account was my money. And, and I was, you know, driving up credit card debt, didn't want to get rid of my saving card, ran up my credit card, drained out my savings. And I was literally living on a prayer. And, and I, I was, I couldn't understand how I'd gotten to that place again. And ultimately, without going through the whole story, I ended up, you know, I was about to be evicted and there's bill collectors calling and I sat in my faux leather chair and laid the gauntlet down and said, I need to know the truth or I give up. And eventually, at some point, the voice spoke to me that night and it said, you made your bank account and your credit card and these external things your source of supply and also of security. And it said, whenever you make anything outside of you your source, it is designed to fail you so that you will come home again to the true source. In other words, thou shalt have no other gods before me. <laughs> Literally, that was the voice. And I practically thought I was going to see Moses carrying a, you know, a tablet looking like Charlton Heston. But, but basically, the voice said, come back. You have to put all of your faith in the source, not the resource. In the source, not resource. And so it's not in your bank account, it's not in your dollar bills. And by the way, that's also the meaning of the love of money is the root of all evil. People often say money is the root of all evil, but it's the love of money, why? Because money is a symbol, it's not the source. And if you think a symbol is the source, you're gonna hoard those symbols, you're going to fight and kill and die for symbols. And meanwhile, you're disconnected from the source and you're going to stagnate and your country is going to stagnate and your family and whatever. But when you are connected to the source, now you don't have to tie yourself up in knots and manipulate and do all these crazy things to try to get more symbols. You know that I'm the source. I'm the goose with the golden eggs. And, and I'll produce the gold. And, and you don't cut yourself open trying to find the gold either. You know that you're the source. So that's one of the most important first ones, that money and wealth and abundance is not material. It's consciousness. It's spiritual. It's energetic. And you are connected to an infinity of that. So that's, that's one of the biggest ones. Another big one is do not adapt. Like the, the hypnotic wealth spell is adapt to conditions. And we misunderstand the law of adaptation. We think adapting means, oh, it's a recession. I better, I better slow down. I better stop investing. I better stop expending. I better stop growing. I better just huddle in a corner and hold on to my little pennies and make sure nobody gets them and I, and I can survive. I'm, I'm exaggerating. But we adapt. We shrink to fit the condition. That's what we think adaptation is. Shrink. To fit. But on the other side of that contraction, you're going to be smaller. Your channels are going to be atrophied. You're going to have less and you're going to have less capacity. So the awakened wealth or abundant mindset hack is you must learn to expand in the face of a contraction. Right? Jesus said, turn the other cheek, love your enemy. It's all the same stuff. All the people taught it. But basically, when there's a recession, or when there's a depression, or when you lose your job, or when you get a no, or whatever the case may be, you have to ask, how can I expand and be even more in the face of this? How can I have more, give more, receive more, the law of circulation? How can I circulate more in the face of this contraction? Now, that won't just be like magic. That's a process. But if you ask that question, it's a, that's the right question, not what's wrong with me? How can I survive? How can I be safe? But 
How can I expand to be a bigger channel of light in the face of this contraction? The question is the quest you're on. And so that quest now will open up in you new ideas, new capacities, new development. And you, on the other side of that contraction, when the recession's over or when whatever the issue is, you will be bigger. You will be a bigger channel and more life will be flowing through you, more wisdom, more genius, more talent, more abundance. So those are two, I think, that are very, very critical, kind of like the two core commandments of living an abundant life. Know that abundance is invisible and you have it infinitely within and know that in, in the face of all obstacles, all contraction, ask, how can I be a bigger giver? How can I expand to be a bigger channel of life or love or brilliance or whatever it is you want to be more of? Oh, Derek, I'm so glad you brought that one. Expanding in uh, situations that are contracting because, um, you know, I want to I want to open the rest of this up for you to share whatever you want. But I did want to say on that, like, I want you to know that that impacted me to help other impact other people, because I clearly remember using that when COVID hit. And I remember so distinctly one day I was, you know, like people were freaking the fuck out and they were hoarding things. They were hoarding toilet paper, which is a great uh, metaphor for lack. Those people were really full of shit. <laughs> That's why they had to hoard all that toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, how do I expand? And this is a contract, contracting circumstance. How do I expand? And I remember going to the store and just grabbing as much as I could to give away to like mothers who could not get supplies, like baby wipes and diapers. And I just remember like feeling that exact principle that you just talked about. And that's what launched my whole business. My new business came from that moment, which came from you. So thank you so much for sharing that. Okay, Derek, like I want to hear what's big in your world. What's going on? Where can my audience like find more of you? And I have to say, I am geeking out about this conversation. This has just been amazing. I, I appreciate that, man. And I can tell people a few things, but I, you know, I can also use the rest of the time just to jam more than I care about selling anything. But I will say one thing about what you just said, which is you just during COVID, you know, people were freaking out, obviously. And it's very natural. It's the first law of human nature, which is survival. And, it's, and it's, it's a misunderstanding of the evolutionary law of survival of the fittest, which is we think that adaptation means, oh no, danger, you know, contract, save yourself. But if you look at evolutionary adaptation, when things get really difficult, the actual adaptation that happens in evolution is like the bird with just one wing and it's flopping around and it dies. It doesn't go, well, I better get rid of that wing and have no wings. It goes, I better grow another wing. Ooh, now I can fly. So evolutionary adaption is all about expansion. It's all about increasing complexity, just to be clear. And also, if you look at like a recession or a depression, like the Great Depression, there wasn't a lack of anything. Right. That's the great thing people don't remember. There was so much abundance of food, but no circulation of it, that they had to track it in train cars down to the ocean and burn it and dump it. They had to force farmers to till over their fields, to turn them over so they wouldn't grow anymore. There was no problem. Nature didn't suddenly stop growing, right? There was all the abundance. There was all the money too, by the way. But what happened? People stopped circulating. That's it. They stopped circulating. They stopped investing in their vision, in their seed. They stopped investing in each other. I mean, some people did. The ones that didn't stop, guess what? They became the titans. They became the moguls. The ones that said, ooh, now's the time, boys. Let's go all in and circulate. You know, we call them terrible guys, but in there are certainly ways in which they didn't have great character, but they understood something. And, and so, but, but, but the general recession or depression was people stopped circulating. They stopped creating, they stopped investing, they stopped sharing, they stopped giving, receive. That's it. That's the only thing that went wrong. And so when you understand that and you understand that there's a bigger economy, there's a universal economy, there's a, a, a spiritual economy, whatever you want to call it, that is bigger than the 
U.S. economy or the world economy, and you can tap into that economy as long as you keep circulating. If you keep investing, if you keep growing, if you keep creating, no matter what these little puny little economic models of the world and people think, you can keep expanding and growing and claiming market share or whatever term works for you. So I just wanted to share that part because it's because ultimately the these principles override human mm. belief systems and arbitrary systems and structures, which most of the economy and business structures are when you're tapped into these universal principles. In terms of me, and again, I don't know how much time we have left. I would love people to, if you like this conversation, you know, get more of it. I would love to help more people like it helped you, brother. And, uh, and I have, it, this work has gone around the world and touched a lot of people. Obviously people can get my book, The Abundance Project. I believe they can just go to the Abundance Project book.com and get that. Um, they can also get my book, Emergence, which was the first book that started it all. And uh, they can also go to my website at DerekRydell.com, D-E-R-E-K-R-Y-D-A-L-L.com and go to the free training section. And I've got several deep dive trainings where I break down these topics and train you and teach you um, and you can have them for free. So if they go there, they can get those for free. I don't know if you have another link to self mastery, um, the self mastery breakthrough. I don't actually have that. It might just be self mastery.com, but I'm not sure. I don't have that link in front of me. Make sure you check the show notes because I'm going to drop some really good stuff in there. The links to his book, as well as his free training, as well as his mastery. And there's also the emergence, the emergence podcast where you can get a lot of, you know, basically I give away 98%, 99% of all of my trainings and teachings and uh which is part of the principle so they can go get a bunch of free stuff on my site go to the podcast and just deep dive and then you know we'll take it from there yeah i can vouch for this stuff like as i'm having this discussion with derek i'm just like blown away by how many things that like i resonated with but also took with me when i first discovered his work and have actually implemented and the you know i have so many examples of that and the the COVID recession was a place where I just launched myself and my business in the stratosphere by following Derek's work. So thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, Mindset Hackers, I would love you, for you to check the show notes and get connected with Derek and uh, buy his book or join one of his uh, courses or grab one of his free resources. And please share this with somebody that you know who needs this message. I think that's the most important part is for all of us to keep expanding. Practice the circulation. Yeah. And I want to say one other thing here, if we have another, just a moment. Absolutely. Just for those of you, because you know, a lot of people are going through a lot of stuff and uh, it may sound like I'm just, you know, born with a silver spoon and I just know how to do all this stuff. And I want to really speak to people that, you know, with COVID, with just the economy, with just life in general, um, it can be very, very challenging and tragedies and challenges and losses. And, you know, life is di life experience is very difficult. Life itself isn't. We just make it difficult because we get in the way of it. But I really want people to understand that what I'm talking about today, none of this is theoretical. It's work that I've lived through tragedy, through loss of fortune, through divorce, through like really major, through recessions through every major calamity just about you guys could imagine. I've personally probably been through it from almost overdose, from near-death experiences, from the death of a child, divorce, loss of millions and millions and millions of dollars in a scam, like you name it. Any one of those would be a reason to give up. And because of the power of these principles when you apply them, not only did I not adapt to those crushing circumstances and shrivel up and die. But it cracked me open to become a bigger and bigger vessel of love and of life and of creativity and of abundance over and over and over again. That's the power. That's how you become truly unstoppable, unbreakable and unsinkable. And so I hope you will take that to heart. Whatever you're going through, whatever you've been through, none of that touches the infinite potential the infinite potential within you is always greater than whatever problem you may face. So that's what I hope you'll tap into. And that's what this emergence principle and abundance principle will help you do. 
Derek, thank you. I'm going to leave it right there because that was so brilliant, so beautiful, and you are making a huge impact. I can vouch for that. All right, Mindset Hackers, thank you so much. I will catch you on the next episode.